This is a really exciting first time video for me because this is a piece of art that I put together in order to commemorate my 100% completion of Mario 64, which I've actually never done before until just now. The game Mario 64 came out, I don't know, what was it, 96 or something like that? It... I remember playing that game when it first came out, experiencing a 3D world for the first time, and just loving the whole adventure. But when it came out, I was also pretty young, and I wasn't super great at playing the game, so I was never really able to beat it myself all the way through. Since then, I've beat it multiple times, and I've even done a haphazard speed run of it where I beat it in like 25 minutes um, using some of the glitches in the game, but I never actually collected all the stars. So I set out to do that with the recent uh, Nintendo Switch online subscription thing where they added the Nintendo 64 on there. So I'll tell you more about it as I show the time lapse of me drawing this thing. I'm going to be using Ohuhu markers and colored pencils and combining those two into a sketchbook. So real quick, before we jump into it, just remember, if you enjoy what you see here, you like art, subscribe to the channel for more stuff that I create. Let me know what you think in the comments, like the video, all that stuff. All right, let's go. All right, so like I said, I had recently played Mario 64 and I got 100% completion. I collected all the stars, did all the things, went all the places. You start the game flying out of a pipe, you're coming to the castle for some cake and all this fun stuff, and then you meet the first and ultimate nemesis of the entire game, the flying camera guy on the cloud. I think at the time, what they wanted to do was they wanted to try and introduce the player to this new, crazy third dimension that they had invented. And they came up with a fun, clever way of working the camera as having this guy with a little camera on a fishing pole, and he flies around on a cloud and follows you on your adventure. But that is where a lot of my contention comes from throughout this entire game. That is where we run into our first and biggest problem. At first, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. You run around and, oh cool, I got camera controls. You go into the, the castle and then you run your way to the first room and the first painting and you jump into the world and you run around and you're having a good time. But then, the more you play this game, the more it will become evident that, that camera guy is basically not on your side and he is doing everything within his power to make this game a lot more frustrating. And I don't want to start off on such a negative note and imply that this game isn't good, but it definitely is age. And that is something that became very, very apparent and a lot of it has to do with that damn camera. However, I will talk about him more as we go on, as I remember and recall some absolutely infuriating aspects of this game through the various levels. So I'm gonna go from there and jump into the first painting. Here we go, Wahoo. The first level is called Bomb Om Battlefields. And this is a pretty good level. I, I think it's fun. I think there's cool stuff to do. One of the first things you do is you run to the top of the mountain and you find the King Bomb Om and then you pick him up and throw him and you pick him up and throw him again and then you beat him and then you get a star and he explodes. But with this, you also find that you don't really need to do things in order for the most part. Some of the levels more so, some of them less. Some levels like this, you can run around and you don't have to do the star that it tells you. You don't have to run to the top of the mountain and you can get stars in various orders. Like if you see an opportunity to get a different star, then you can just go for it. Collect some red coins, do this and that. Uh, some things don't show up right away. Like the next star I think is the race with the turtle up the mountain. And so in some cases, you do have to do them in a certain order because like, something like that won't show up until you do one before it. 
but overall, I think this level is a lot of fun. I had an issue because the first thing I did was I ran to the chain chomp and I tried to ground pound his post so he would smash open the bars and give me the star. I had the most unbelievably hard time doing this and I never had this problem in the past. I, I've never in my life played this game and had an issue with the chain chomp, but for some reason, when I played it this time, I don't know if it was me getting used to the controls or if there's something weird with the N64 emulator on the Switch. I don't know, but I had an unbelievable amount of trouble trying to ground pound a single post while the chain chomp kept killing me. And that is where there is a benefit that I would use throughout this entire playthrough. Because I was playing on the emulator on the Switch, I had the suspend points, which you can create at any given point and reload your game and try again and you don't have to get kicked out of the level. And that saved my bacon throughout this entire run through because there was a lot of stuff that I came across that would have been way more frustrating if I didn't have the suspend points. All in all, World 1, I loved it. I thought it was a good level. All right, so we finish up as much as we can and you can't get everything because you haven't unlocked all the caps in the game yet. So then we gotta move on. So we run to the other painting, World 2, jump into the painting, Wahoo. So we find ourselves in Womp's Fortress. I've always loved this level. I've always enjoyed the layout of it, the experience, you run to the top, one of the first things you do is you, you fight the giant wall that face plants on the ground and then you ground, ground pound his band-aid. There's other cool, unique stuff in this level, like at some point you find an owl and it's hiding in the tree and you grab the owl and you fly around the top of the level and drop into a cage to get another star. Uh, there's a secret star where you shoot out of a cannon and face plant right into the corner of a wall to explode it to reveal another star, which is pretty unique. I, I like what they did with that. I found a lot of the time throughout this game, they were actually taking a lot of chances doing things were unique, unique star challenges throughout the whole game. So world two, love it. Let's move on. Next level is Jolly Rogers Bay, jumping in the painting, Wahoo. Now you might think that this level would be extremely frustrating. I know I would expect that because it's a water level, and we all know that if you played enough Mario levels and enough Mario games that are in the water, they're always frustrating. It's very, very hard in any game ever to make a water level that's super fun. There are things about this that I found were challenging and it slows down a bit because swimming is slow. And that can be frustrating because the mechanics of Mario moving through the water is a bit weird, but it's actually not as weird as him running around on foot at times. The level has this sunken ship thing, which I think is really cool. I always love sunken ships in anything. I just think it's a really fascinating concept or something to look at and explore, like the idea of finding sunken treasure or whatever. So I don't actually have that much to say about this level. I thought it was actually pretty cool. I didn't have too many issues with it. It wasn't that difficult. I thought it was a good level, actually. Maybe, in retrospect, might be one of the only Mario levels underwater that I've ever enjoyed. All right, we finish up the water level and then we go to the next painting, jump into it, Wahoo. We're at Cool Cool Mountain. This is the first snow ice level in the game. And I really don't like this level. This is where it starts to kind of trip over itself with this game. There were multiple things in this level that I had an issue with. The first star you go for is the sliding challenge where you race a penguin down the slide to the bottom and you gotta beat him there. And when I did it this time, it actually wasn't all that hard. I tried doing some goofy stuff where you jump off the slide and jump way farther down. It ends up not really working out that well because somehow in the time it takes for you to do that, the penguin catches up. One of the times I played this in the past, for some reason, I had the absolute hardest time in the world trying to beat this race. This time through, it didn't actually give me that much issue. So moving on. 
This is also the level where it has a penguin at the bottom and you gotta grab the penguin at the top of the level and bring it all the way down to the bottom. This can result in a lot of frustration in my opinion because you fall into the snow, you slide off an edge, the penguin gets out of your hands and it starts walking away and then it just gets more frustrating as you're trying to slip and slide around this environment because everything's made of ice and then you gotta chase down the stupid penguin that keeps walking away. My main issue with this level was really that there was one star where you have to reunite the body and head of a snowman. The head is down near the bottom-ish or middle area and then you have to roll the snowball from the top of the level and somehow reunite the body with the head. And this one gave me a lot of issues because I kept doing it. I kept getting run over by the snowball and I kept falling behind it. So the snowball runs ahead, goes off the side of the cliff and then you're done. Then I do the reload on the suspend point, go right back to the top of the mountain, try again. And I think it took me about 10 times to get this done because I had no idea what the function of this was. I, don't, I didn't know what was supposed to happen to get the snowball to stop. What ends up working is you have to race ahead of the snowball really fast and then stand right in front of the head and have the snowball crash through you for some reason because that was the only way that it would get it to reunite with the body. And I think it's stupid that that's the only way that would work. Anyway, get the rest of the stars moving on to the next painting. This time we're not jumping into a painting wahoo. We do the Bowser level and you run towards a painting and then you fall through the trap door. There is one extra star to be obtained in this level and that's getting the red coins. I actually didn't have too much of a problem with this. I thought the level design of the Bowser stage was pretty good. Then we do the fight with him and you grab his tail, you throw him wahoo into the bomb do that a couple times and then you're good to go. With that, you get a key, you run downstairs and you go follow a boo out into the courtyard. You tackle the boo, a cage pops out, you jump into the cage, you go into a tiny mansion for some reason. I, I don't know why it's in a tiny cage. I feel like they could have just as well put it in a painting and it would have worked just fine. It gets annoying every time you jump out of the level and you have to punch the boo again just to get back into the level. This level I actually didn't like that much. I felt like the design was a little less than inspired. The outside of the mansion feels really empty and lifeless, which maybe that was the point, but I didn't really enjoy it. And then the inside of the mansion isn't all that expansive. It is a little confusing, which seems to be the running case with all the haunted mansion levels in Mario as they want to be confusing. Ultimately, I didn't really like it all that much. It was kind of a shame because I like Haunted Mansion stuff. I also had an issue finding the King Boo on top of the mansion because I forgot where that was and I got lost five different times trying to figure out as I would run around the mansion where I was supposed to go, which I don't think is all that fun. All right, so we finish up the mansion and then we move on to what is probably my least favorite level in this entire game, the Hazy Maze Cave. This is the one that is in the pool that looks a lot like mercury or some kind of metal liquid thing and you jump into it and then you just get completely lost. I think it's disorganized. There are a lot of the stars in there I found were frustrating to try and obtain. I just really hate the design of this entire level. Also, there is the metal cap, which I knew was supposed to be somewhere in this level to unlock, and I got lost and forgot where a door was that I had gone through or hadn't gone through. I don't even know, and it took me a long time to figure that one out too, so I, I just hate this level altogether. But we finished that Wahoo, jump into another painting, and then we go to a level I actually enjoy, the Lethal Lava Lands. This is the only like major fire stage outside the Bowser levels. And I actually like this one a lot. There's a little thing where you fight the bully, push him into the lava. There's a volcano at the center that you can jump into for another sub area. And I think all of that stuff is really cool. There's a shifty puzzle thing where you collect some red coins while it's shifting around above the lava. I, I just think a lot of the ideas that they implemented in this level were a lot of fun. I thought it was fun to run through. Great level. 
Then we finish up that level, move on to Shifting Sand Lands, which is hidden in a wall. Jump into that wall. And we find a place, the only desert in the entire game in this case. And there's, I think, two pokey enemies, some Goombas, some bombs, a bunch of sinky sand, quicksand stuff that sucks you down underneath. And that was the main complaint I had with this level. I was so frustrated with the sand that as soon as you land in it, you just get immediately killed. Outside of that, actually, though, this level is pretty fun. I liked a lot of the stuff. I like the little block that rolls around and has an opening, and you have to stand in the right spot as it's rolling around so it goes over you. There's also a vulture that steals your hat. That is actually where I left my hat in this game. I finished the entire game from that point on with no hat because I was totally determined to just have no hat for the rest of the game. And actually, one of the times when I was trying to get one of the stars, the damn bird would fly back over and it would accidentally hit me while I was trying to do something else and then it would return my hat to me. And I was like, no, I don't want my hat. How many times do you get to play a game where you don't wear Mario's hat? But there's a cool boss in the pyramid. You go inside the pyramid, uh, make your way up to the top and then there's this floating ancient hand stone thing where you, it has eyes in the hands and I think the design is super awesome and you just gotta tackle the eyes while they're trying to slap you around and whatever. I thought it was a really fun level, other than the quicksand. Then we run over, there's this other water level, the Dire Dire Docks. I think that one's the one that's the precursor to the second Bowser fight. That one, not as good. I don't think it's as fun of a, a water level. The first one I think was much better. This one, I don't really have much to say about it. I, I just kind of found it annoying all the way through. So in this case, they stayed true to the Mario tradition of having an obnoxious water level. Then you do the Bowser fight. He's a little bit harder this time. You do you run through the level, there's the red coins, you get a star from that. And then you fight him, throw him into the bombs, wahoo. Moving on, we get the key, run up the stairs to the top floor of the castle, and we find our way into the next snow level. We run into the room that has a bunch of mirrors on the wall and it's a hidden painting because you look in the mirror and you see a painting on the wall but in the real world there's no painting on the wall so you jump at the wall and then there you, here we go wahoo we're in snowman's land and i think this level is a much better ice snow level i really didn't have any issue with this level there's the first one where there's a little house made of ice and you just kind of navigate your way through that real quick. There's a star. There's a hidden igloo that has another small secret area with ice walls. There's a part where you go up to the top of the mountain and the giant snowman mountain head is blowing ice wind. And all you gotta do is just stand on top of the penguin head and let it take you over and then you're good to go. There's a very frustrating bully fight where you have to do it on an ice platform and push that guy off. I actually had that glitch out where I pushed him off onto the platform that runs up to the ice square and he just got stuck there for a while and I had to try and undo that and it didn't work out so I had to restart the level. Collecting the 100 coins for this level was also pretty reasonable. I felt like it was generous with its coin availability. There's some other ones that I'm going to talk about where there are not enough coins or barely enough coins. Then we jump into this other painting after we finish that up. We got the Wet Dry World. That one, I forgot it was even called that. That's the one with the level of the water that can be adjusted from the top of the room to the bottom and anywhere in between and you have to kind of puzzle your way around the entire setup of that place and there's also a second level underneath it where you shoot yourself out of a cannon into the corner and then you swim down through this long tunnel and come out the other end to like a little village type thing this is actually one of my favorite levels in the game because i thought it was really cool i thought it was unique you have some guys that have these little flippy paddles that if they get under your feet, they'll just launch you through the air. And if you're facing the wrong direction, they can just launch you down the previous levels and slam you into the ground, which I think is kind of funny. I didn't have too many issues with this level. There was one where I got confused a little bit and I ran around, but I figured it out. It didn't give me too much of an issue. I didn't feel like this level was unreasonable like some of the other ones. 
Then there's another level that you jump into the painting to, Wahoo, called Tall Tall Mountain. I actually thought I liked this level until I played it again this time through trying to get all the stars, and there was one in particular that really bent me out of shape. It is actually the 100 coins. I found that, at least by my eye, in the majority of the level, there is not enough coins for you to get all 100 or more to get the last star. There is a slide level that's secret and hidden in the wall, and there's a star there for doing the slide, and there's a whole bunch of coins. I was trying to do these both at the same time, and I found that when you would collect the 100th coin, and it would end up being on the slide, the star appears above you on the slide, and then we run into a massive malfunction where I was so determined to get these both in the same run for some reason, I just insisted that I had to do that, and I ended up wasting more time than I really needed to. The star would appear above your head on the slide, and then you would immediately continue to slide forward. I found after maybe seven attempts of doing this, that one place on the slide, if you kind of navigate very carefully, you can backtrack and hop and go back and grab the star. However, there is a malfunction with that because of the way the game renders Mario after he picks up the star. It then puts him on his stomach going backwards on the slide, and you cannot jump. And at this junction point on the slide, you therefore then cannot make the hard right turn up the bank to get to the rest of the slide, otherwise you will just go forward and fall off and die. So one of the other times, I try and go through, get the star, get to the end of the slide, go around, run all the way back up the level, go into the slide again, to find, big surprise, it's a Nintendo 64 game, the star has disappeared. I never even thought it would be possible to despawn a star in the game. Alright, so I finagled that system for a while, somehow I get the star, I don't even remember because I got so frustrated from that experience that I don't even know what I did to finally get the damn star. Moving on, you jump into the painting or the other painting, both go to the same world, the tiny huge islands. This is the one where you shift between the giant land and the small land, where either you're a giant or you're tiny. And you got giant Goombas or tiny Goombas. This level was okay. I found some very frustrating things about it. Some of the stars were kind of a giant pain. And I also ran into a lot of issues with the way the camera functions while I tried to figure things out. Also, I'm pretty sure there's a thing, a post, in the level that is designed to completely troll you because it doesn't do anything. And it's on an island that's hard to get to. Then this is also another level where I had a big issue trying to get all the coins for the 100 coin star. I did not know initially that you could ground pound the Goombas and other things like that and get fivers out of them, five coins, and I had wasted my time killing a bunch of the other ones before I realized that and lost out. So it's really, I guess, my fault, but it still was frustrating nonetheless. And then we have ourselves near the very end of the game. There's only two more levels. You have the clock and the rainbow ride. I thought the rainbow ride was an okay level. I didn't have too many issues with it. I got a little turned around trying to be decisive about what I wanted to go explore. I actually didn't remember much from this level, so I kept wanting to go and deviate and do other things. I thought it was actually kind of a fun level. Not too bad. There's also the level where you have a magic carpet thing that kind of goes along the rainbow. There's a flying ship in one area. There's a giant wall that you have to kind of, it almost functions like a 2D area, I think is what they were going for, where you collect some red coins. And then there's, there's just, it seems like it's almost a little ADD because you run over in this direction and you see this over here. It's just such a random level. And I know they were trying to go for like the sky level that they usually have in most of the Mario games. It just felt super random, so I don't think the design was necessarily great, but strangely, I enjoyed the level all the same. I thought it was one of the better ones. 
And then finally, before the final showdown, the final hootenanny, you have the clock tower. You jump into the clock and that is one of my favorite levels in the entire game. I thought it was super cool when I found out as a kid that you could change the function of the level based on the hand position when you entered the level. The best thing to do, I think, except for two stars, is to enter and freeze time in the level so none of the components move. You can actually get through almost everything in the level with time frozen. I think there's two that you require the hands to move so it creates a bridge and then you could run to get to the area you need to. Otherwise, it's actually way easier to beat that level if you freeze time for every other star. Then of course there are the castle secret stars. There's a secret slide, a princess slide in one of the rooms in the beginning of the castle you can actually do very early on. I believe there's three toads that just give you a star if you talk to them. There's an aquarium where you go and get some red coins. There's a flying level where you get some red coins. There's the level where you get the red cap, the metal cap, the invisible transparent walk through stuff cap. And like I mentioned before, the red coins for the Bowser stages. At some point you gotta ground pound a random pillar which somehow drains the moat around the castle and gives you access to some stuff. I don't know what that's about. I don't know how that works mechanically, but whatever. And then that's it. You got all 120 stars. If you feel so compelled, you run and do the final level, kill Bowser, and get the end screen, end titles, the wrap up, all that good stuff. Or you could just hang out. Go outside, jump in the cannon that unlocks on the outside of the castle, get shot up to the, the roof, find a Yoshi who gives you a bunch of lives, runs off to do who knows what. And then you get a little wing cap and you can just fly around the castle, wahoo. And that's 100% Mario 64. Hey, make sure you check out the description below this video to find where I got the awesome music that's playing during this video. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and seeing the creation and hearing about my thoughts on the video game. Uh, I'm really happy with doing this piece. It took me a surprising amount of time to create this. I think in total, I worked on it for maybe four and a half to five hours. So I was pretty surprised. I didn't think it was gonna take that long for some reason, but I did fill up the page with a lot of detail. I couldn't get everything, but I tried to incorporate things at least from as many levels as possible to kind of represent the game as a whole and pull different pieces together. Um, some of it, I couldn't get every single level, otherwise this probably would have taken me another three hours on top of it or something. But I'm very happy with this piece all together. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more artworks in the future. I'm do doing these at least once a week, I'm trying to do more in the future, but I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know, like I said in the comments, hit the like button, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Holy crap. That thing almost went through the floor. <laughs>